you, Mr. Burns. Uh, good evening, everybody. So after um, we were informed by BOCES that they were not going to continue with the lease, as Mrs. Burns said, uh, we began exploring our options um, for what could be done with the building. And we looked into you know, what we think was a, a, an exhaustive list, including uh, leasing the building to new tenants, uh, a ground lease, which is, you're not, so if you're not familiar, the lease is where you lease the existing building. Ground lease is where you actually lease the land. And the group that leases the land could, do, could build something on it. Uh, we looked at converting the property into some kind of a sports complex, selling the property uh, for the purposes of possibly of building medical offices, a strip mall, parking lot, housing, or any combination of the, of the above. In the end, the board wanted to do what we thought was going to be the best thing for the entire community. In this particular case, I think that the best thing for the community happens to be the best thing for the school district. And in the case of West Islip, I think that the set that synergy is always there because, as I would like to say, school district is the community and the community is the school district. As it turns out, uh, West Islip is the only hamlet in the town of Islip that does not have a condominium or rental housing for people 55 and over. Every other hamlet has it. And, you know, Mrs. Burns spoke about her parents, um, and her mom's still living in the, in the house that she's been in since 1963, and that really played, that sort of thing, I think, is indicative of West Iceland, and it played a big part in our thought process. Um, it, it's something that I always say, so I'm in West Iceland now about 25 years, and I feel like I just moved in because so many people have lived here forever. And it's funny because a couple of months ago, Mrs. Burns came across a, uh, an article in USA Today and she sent it to me. And basically what the article did was it listed all the towns in America and how by how long people lived there. Of all the towns in America, there are only three towns where people have lived longer than they've lived in West Iceland. So, which personally I think sells a lot of great things about West Iceland. You know, many of, many of the people that live here, they bought their parents' homes, and this became a factor in what we were thinking. So I'm sure, looking around, there's quite a few of you who are still in your homes because you don't want to move. Your families are here, uh, your kids, your grandkids, this, this, is, this is your home. But, of course, as time goes on, it gets more and more difficult to maintain a home for various reasons. So without that, Pull it senior, although it's you know 55 and over. Without that that option being in town, you just keep staying in the home. So we thought that this was a it would provide um, an opportunity for a lot of our own seniors, and you know possibly as well as others, of course, but but hopefully at, uh, at our own. So with that in mind, um, the next steps were to choose a broker. Uh, we did do that. Um, we engaged uh, uh, Jamie Winkler. Mrs. Winkler is here tonight. Thank you, Jamie. Jamie, Mrs. Winkler, uh, if you don't know, has represented the district uh, in the other two buildings that we've been leasing now for, I guess it's about eight years or so. Um, she's done a great job. Uh, she treats it as we knew, like, like her home, because she lives here. And she's done such a great job that that's where we wanted to go again. So we engaged Mrs. Winkler. Um, Mrs. Winkler then uh, advertised the property. We have uh, started to meet with developers who submitted best offers. And we're going from here. Of course, we're presenting the initial ideas to the community. Um, we'll choose a developer. And the plan is to hold a community vote in May, at which time residents, you guys, will decide whether to approve the sale or not. So basically, the way that that works is the board decides specifically uh, who the developer is going to be, 
and they will come with a very specific plan. We will present that to you at more of these meetings, and then in May, you guys get to vote yes or no. So obviously, it's in everybody's best interest if we get your feedback early and often so that there are no surprises. You know, obviously, we, we'd like to know that this is something that uh, the community supports uh, well in advance. So as I mentioned, uh, Jamie Winkler uh, was engaged by the board. Uh, we received eight offers on the property. We met with five different developers already. Three of those developers are still under consideration for a potential deal. And as I say, the successful developer and their proposal will be chosen by the board. Okay, um, some rather mundane, no offense to the lawyer in the building, I apologize, uh, legalese. Um, in Union Free School Districts, the school board, as I said, decides whether to sell the property. Uh, Education Law 1709 gives the board the authority to sell the property at such price and upon such terms as the voters shall prescribe. Although the district has a legal duty to provide certain information to voters prior to a referendum, this does not include appraisal price information. The terms of the sale, as I said, are subject to voter approval. The refer referendum put before you will speak in general terms, uh, such as the Board of Education is authorized to sell the property at or above its fair market value, and as I said, you will get the final say. So the school board has a fiduciary duty to secure what's called the best price obtainable in the board's judgment for any lawful use of the premises. The Commissioner of Education has noted that a board of education has broad discretion to determine the best price for which a property can be sold to condition the sale of such terms as in the board's judgment will yield the maximum financial benefit for the district and determine the best method of sale to be utilized in a particular case. So now that I got past the legalese, I have to get on to the financial needs. And no offense to the finance people. So what happens if we sell the property the building? What happens to the, to the proceeds? Um, so according to law, again, if any outstanding debt obligations exist for the property, the district is required to place the, the proceeds in a mandatory reserve for debt service. There are no outstanding debts on the property, so we don't have to worry about that. All remaining proceeds from the sale of real property are required to be placed in what's called a reserve for tax reduction. Uh, this reserve is established by a board resolution, and essentially what it means in our case is that as we go forward, uh, the money will be in, in reserve, and we will use it to pay for future projects that are necessary for the district. So at that point, of course, they will not, uh, those projects would not cost the taxpayers money because they will be coming from the uh, reserve. Money from the reserve is to be appropriated annually, which reduces real property taxes over a period not to exceed 10 years. Uh, in addition, of course, once the building gets sold or the properties get sold, uh, then we start to derive property school taxes from it. Now, it's a little more complicated than that because dependent on what's built, um, the town may, and likely will, issue tax abatements, uh, in which case the taxes get phased in over a period of years. But certainly by the time uh, the district is done spending down the reserves, the property taxes will be in full force. So at, at that point, it then becomes a, an annual, steady annual stream of revenue. Um, which continues essentially forever, as long as there's uh, people in the uh, rent, you know, living there. Okay. Just so you're aware, the entire uh, uh, PowerPoint will be on the district website by tomorrow morning. So. Yeah, we didn't we didn't print out, but uh, but you can get it off the website in the morning. Um, so at this point, uh, we'd like to open it up to uh, questions and comments. Um, we want to get to everybody who has a comment, so we're going to ask you to keep it to around three minutes. We'll have the buzzer, but um, 
I guess some people have put in cards already. Thank you. And I just wanted to add, so, going back to your comment regarding the Toro site, 
and how that has pretty much changing into a monster of, of a production over there. Um, I think you know we were uh, in agreement that we wanted to keep this bedroom community that we have here, the small you know um, family community, as it is. And so what we have in mind is not a downtown retail, um, you know, uh, packed in fence, um, you know, uh, uh, development, but you know, more of a feel of fitting into the neighborhood that we're putting it into. Thank you. Actually, by, by the way, Jerry, I don't want to take any of your time. Yet. That's okay. I don't. I don't, I don't get time. Okay. <laughs> but by the way, the um, as, as I understand the uh, the town code, uh, we're, the, it's limited to twelve. Uh, units per acre for rental and 10 units per acre for condo and, and as I mentioned um, we have been very specific that there'll be no requests for waivers to make to build a bit more on top of that. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Becerra. Thank you. Uh, I'm Mr. Becerra. I'm Thank you for uh, seeing me. My name is Daniel Becerra. My dad toured the district for almost 30 years, and it was very much like family. Um, if he wasn't at home, most of the time he was in West Iceland. He lived in Hot Dog, and uh, it seemed like he spent a lot of time here, and he loved being here. I came a lot, a lot of times with all the functions. Um, my basic question, and the gentleman before me pretty much hit on it, is I was just concerned that it wouldn't ask the notice, is it, um, has he only offered that you're You've been thinking about these on senior housing now? At this moment. At this moment, oh yes. Now, the other question was, I was just concerned that it doesn't escalate, like you said. And if they keep it to that specific uh, 10 units or 12 units per acre, then that would be fine. I just want, I just didn't want to cram a whole bunch of stuff in with no green space or no parking. Because we want to have 600 houses there and, and try to get as much um, we, we are very sensitive to the fact that this is a, a residential area all around the building, across the street. There are houses, of course, uh, you know, West Ice has infrastructure issues all over, as does most of Long Island, but, you know, one, one lane street. So um, we we are looking, as Mrs. LaRosa said, we're looking to make this project additive to the community. Uh, and, and we really don't want to do anything that would detract from the lifestyle that uh, people of West Iceland have come to, to enjoy here. And as I said, have lived here more than, longer than uh, almost everywhere in the country. Did you look at the 55 and older, because chances are they're not going to have children and it's not going to be an additional burden on the school system, having more children as opposed to houses or, or just condos to anybody. So, uh, you know, that, that's something that, that has certainly come up. Uh, a, a couple of the developers uh, pointed that out. I, I can't say that that's really been um, a driving motivation for us. Um, you know, I think, for me anyway, uh, ideally, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our seniors would move into this property and possibly sell their houses to, to younger families, in which case we might get some, might we not, we might get some, some more kids, but I think in that case, uh, it would not become a burden, it would really just stabilize the continuing uh, population decrease that you know we've undergone for so long. So that was like, it wasn't a thought, it was just something that might help them in the That's I appreciate I appreciate you taking the time and it seems for a lot of people to try to have this interest Thank you very much. Mr. Petty. Marco? Okay, this is that you can take the
hundred pounds. I mean, because we're saying senior housing, which is great. Say it doesn't. Say the town says it's not going to be senior housing. We want to build condos. We want to get children. Are we going to be able to take the children in? I mean, this is uh, it's. It's an, it's an open end, and it's not going to be finalized until it goes to a town hearing. But <coughs> everything can change. Right, but but we can make the sale contingent. We talk, Mr. Bowles, correct me if I'm wrong. Contingent on our conditions. Now, how long can we will those conditions stay in effect? In terms of, as Mr. Pepe is suggesting, you know, at some point down the road, um, can the town turn around and say? Okay, you know, this was sold with a contingent uh, on all of these um, requirements that it's going to be senior housing, but now we're going to let you sell rent to whoever you want. I think that question in part has to do with what the town's uh, own conditions are at that particular site. And so I think what you've done is critical is bring the town into the process to get the input as the town as to what they would envision as appropriate for that particular site. So I think that will have the greatest impact on the process. And through zoning, through zoning, the town can implement covenants on, on the, um, the weaver, on the zoning changes that it's the uh, Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the town can turn around and say, well, well, but they're, they're, we supporting, they're, they're supporting this process, and they believe West Islip needs this Correct. type of development. But this town is what they're looking for. Yes. But that doesn't mean what we're going to get. So therefore, we have to actually. Well, if if, 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 what? if if the town doesn't approve what we've set up, then the sale does not go through. We are back to the door. So then we're not selling it until the guy gets approval. It's going to be the sale will be contingent upon approval. Appro approval from the town board. Correct. Correct. Now you did make a, a, a great question about the sewers, and we will take a look at that. Yeah, because we are at a maximum now. Right. We'll take a look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I get this right. This is I think it's I think it's David Richard. David Bob, I'm sorry. I showed it to Mr. McGinnis. I said, you think that's Richard? He says, I think it is, but it could be Rabat. <laughs> Uh, like most of these people, I've lived here for most of my life. Uh, my biggest question here is, and I love the idea of senior housing, um, I'm worried about the tax advantage for existing families here. Because you're looking at a 55 foot community, which is going to have a tax advantage. We have, and don't get me wrong, I love Catholic Church, I'm a Catholic myself. We have over, there almost, you can look at it, probably 30 acres of land that's owned by the church, which is already a tax advantage. We have high taxes, even for being on the South Shore, but comparatively, with places like Bayshore. The question is, for those, like, don't get me wrong, I love the, the, the older senior community homes, but what are the other options that we may have? So, because, I'm looking at it, I don't believe that seniors get a tax advantage. There's a 55, isn't there, with the 55 over the star grade? There's a tax advantage with some of these communities? Yes. What's that? They do reduce tax, but not. All right, you said, from my understanding, was that there isn't a tax advantage, but you know, as you say, in town and grub, we already have a ton of tax advantage areas. We look at the hospital, we look at the school, we look at the church. Well, but this, this would be um, an area that will generate taxes. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, um, it will likely get, um, depending on whether it's rentals or condos, it will likely get uh, tax abatement uh, for 10 years. It, it phases in 10% uh, per year. Uh, after that, um, we will get taxes. There are other things uh, that could get taxes, but you know we felt, uh, still do, that they were. My biggest concern is just because without anything else, it's the school the school boards. Those taxes, property taxes, go to our schools. Sure, and absolutely. Goes to our salaries. Goes to the, the, the people who work here. Goes to the technology that we have. The the, the resources that our school has. And that's you know me having small children you know, is my my main. And, 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 and we have um, initiated uh, dialogue um, with the town on that subject as well. Uh, Mr. Pilati has had several conversations um, with them regarding with the assessor and the IBA. Um, I, I've spoken with the, uh, the IBA as well. Uh, so it, all indications are that this will be a 
tax revenue producing site. Uh, it will be, you know, we can't get an exact number until we put in the exact plans, but that will be known before we come to the public for the final plans. That is, that was about how can we maximize that as a price right. because of the tax Well, I, I mean, you know, there, there, there might be other uh, things that might be other things that produce more taxes, but I don't, you know, the board just really didn't feel like that was in the best interest of the community to go around. Yeah, there's a, what I'm hearing is a lot of assumption here, like it's going to be what's less people moving into, what's less homes, and I get them, what's less person that could be forever. My family's going to be forever, you know, my grandchildren. That's an assumption, though. It's a large assumption. I'm just saying that people want to stay in home because they're here. It's their home. Yeah, well, it wasn't so much an assumption as a whole. Like, yeah, Community. And, and you know what? As, 
And that was another, another point I want to make too as well, was some of our West Texas realtors, they've done tremendous, they sponsor a lot of activities, and yet we excluded them in the bidding process, you know, it, it, as a realtor. And well, again, it's not an op on you, but I, I think it was a little, so to give you a little background on that, we did, we did see presentations from multiple realtors uh, back when we leased out the other two buildings. Uh, Mrs. Winkler was deemed the best option at that time. She has represented uh, the district admirably um, since then, and so we chose to uh, to continue our uh, association with her. Just to clarify, the listing was Okay. Has anybody, has any other realtor given a proposal for the prize? Yes. 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 Um,
exclude everyone. What I'm saying, you can I just to do a homeowner who wants it. It's a good, it's a, it's a good question. Let's take a look. Like I said, I had the same question. Why are three, three of us are from the West Side Association? You and I, you and I have exchanged thoughts that, uh, that you attended one year. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the thought is certainly a senior uh, problem like that. However, the population, school population, has dropped because we're old, and unfortunately, we don't have children at all. I'd like to try. Population surveys. Uh, we do it. We have them renew it periodically, and they do it for a, a ten-year period of time. And they are uh, unfortunately still showing uh, population decreasing. But as a fallback, of course, we do still have the two other buildings that we are currently leasing, and those could be um, repurposed at some point if one comes necessary. The Bayview and Westbrook. Yeah, that's occurred. Right. Um, <clears throat> I don't see, for instance, Atlantic moving there. I understand that that's out. That Atlantic buy that and put it up, put their cars in there to park. Are you asking if, if, if that's something that we have moved out, or are you saying that's something you're not in favor of? Anything's possible. Are you in favor of that, or you would not like to see that? Well, I think I'm trying to make you understand maybe said that this community, if I know anyone here, and I've been here a while, they would not uh, approve of Atlantic pick up another piece of property. Okay. This The other... Uh, me, uh, listen, excuse me. Let's not get into one. Thank you. The other concern is with the West Side for Consumption, we've had difficult with the town board, the planning board also, where things were put into documents, mm -hmm. promises, and suddenly things totally changed. Mm -hmm. Now you said that the uh, board uh, would indicate would go along with us on what you're talking about. Yes, they have. What they control do. can you have over the town? Well. <laughs> Uh, ultimately, of course, the town will do what the town does. Um, you know, we have, as I said, you're right, we, we have had conversations with the town. The town is in support of, the, of this concept, uh, very much so. Um, of course, they have not seen all the particulars, but as I, as I say, um, this sale will be contingent on approval. So if the town comes back and says, well, we don't like this uh, clause and we don't like this clause, you know, then we're basically back to back to zero, right? We don't go forward with the deal if it doesn't meet with what we've set up and what you've approved. And I think are you referring a little bit to the aesthetic of what the final product will look like and how that will fit into our community? Because I know that you all have done a lot of work, and maybe some of you don't know, the Sex Association has advocated for a lot of the land posts you see in town, the benching, the cobblestones in front of. Um, stop and shop, the way that building was constructed, um, LaGrange, the CVS project, all of that with, with the, the thought of, you know, keeping, you know, websites of looking like a, a community that you want to come and visit, right? Correct? Right? You have all done that. And you've advocated and you've been a voice at town hall, at those meetings, and insisting that you get what you want out of that, correct? Well, I, mean, I remember Tremendous fight we had for a beautiful building in, in uh, antique style, if you call it, or, or, or 
the piece. The Wyndham style. Right. Uh, that uh, a Montauk Cardway win back in the 40s. Yeah. Suddenly they said it's two feet too high. And I said, well, we have a hospital that's five stories, I have a high school that's four stories, three stories. And the people who presented petitions that people said, wave the eight feet. They would not move. I plead the assistant board, the whole thing, they wouldn't move on it. So I'm afraid that something will go in on your thoughts of what's going to happen and suddenly find that they've changed. So I just so good point. Yeah, we'll keep that that, that gentleman will lock it up as tight as he can. Absolutely. Because if you're not speaking of the people who are there today, five years they may be different people. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, let me let me get to the next one and then I'll come back. Uh, Bob Ferraro. Um, I guess just hearing like the proposals, what I'm sort of uh, curious about is looking at the, the zoning for the area. It doesn't seem like it's permitted use like the retirement home. So I guess my concern would be that we probably look to follow a change of zone, which could significantly change both regulations, like what they'll be able to build there. And I don't know how much we can really control that. So like um, right now, I mean, we're living in two stories. 28 feet max height. So I would want to be able to probably sell the property more to a residential developer that could like the Bell's Nursery scenario so that they can buy that to put more homes, maybe even a little park for the, the kids and stuff like that. Because right now there's a little part of it, let's say losing the soccer fields. Um, even looking at the tree map, if you use the neck of Jackson and Fairfax and turn it into more neighborhood than a commercial property. You know? It doesn't also, it doesn't seem but the uses that are allowed, it's not an allowed use, except for community building, museum, and those are uses by a special exception in the Board of Appeals. So otherwise it says if it's not those, it's not it's prohibited. So it sounds like they have to change the use. Yes. Yeah. So you've got to do a commercial, then we can't really control if it's going to be on a property line or how high without knowing what zone they're going to change it to. You know, like maybe people in a neighborhood that, yes, it's a 25 foot buffer, so they'll get some evergreens, but they could have a four story building in their backyard. You know? So, would you like to address that? The property is now zoned school, that's the zone that it's called. It will be an application changing from school to residential C. Residential C is senior housing, and it's very, very strict. If you look on the AE code, um, if you go on the website, and if you go to the AE code, it tells you exactly what the allowable um, number is for senior housing. And it's, again, 10 for acre for condos and 12 for acre for apartments, for senior apartments. And it's listed on the AE code of the exact setbacks that are required. When we uh, put this out to bid, we made it very clear to the developer that they are not going to be able to ask for any relaxations at all. So exactly what is on the code for senior housing will be mandated. So there's only one there, it's only one change of code from school to senior. So the restriction on the sale would limit it to becoming a zone C and then yes. that's it. Yes, and right. that, you can do that. Yes, you can. Right. Because that would be my only concern, like I said, because I you know I work with Town Five and Sometimes things just go through, and then all of a sudden there's this right. gigantic building that you can control. So, so yeah, that and, has lawyers. and we've been we've been very clear on this uh, from the start. It, it really was part of Mrs. Wigler's uh, initial um, solicitation that um, the change of zone would be mm -hmm. to senior residential, and that's and that's it. We will we will not uh, go for any other uh, relaxation. This is what we said. Any other relaxation. So in that standard code. Then, uh, what's the senior housing? Is it, is, do you feel is it worth more money than development? I mean, if they were sell to residential, I mean, just looking at it, it's 11 acres? Yeah. It's 11 acres. You know, if that was 30-something homes times 600, that's $18 million just in 
you know, to for a developer to be able to sell. So obviously you can use some of that. I just didn't know uh, what this senior housing would do for us in that respect. I think at this point there's actually a greater need for the senior housing. Uh, certainly than uh, high-end homes. Uh, as I recall, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I think Bells did have trouble selling those, those some of those homes. Back before you before the vote. Okay. So keep coming. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You want to I just wanted to, to say, I, you know, personally, like I said, I'm looking for the bras to get the best offer, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't exclude. I, I'm a lifelong resident of this community. I've been here my whole life. I don't know if, if some of these people remember what was up where the Atlantic Water Wall was before they moved in. And what an eyesore that used to be. They've taken over Rayco. They're in the process of, of refacing that, cleaning it up. I'm not saying it has to be a man. I'm just saying it's an option. We should be saying. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. If we're not, we're not, we don't want to see cars. They maintain it properly in particular. So they've been an asset to this community. Really yeah, and, and this is not a referendum on, on, on Atlantic in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's just an attempt to find uh, what's in the best interest of the community long term. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Mark up. Oh, you're good. You're sure? Okay. And, and anybody else have a question or a comment? Which if you don't mind, just uh, state your name. Uh, Bill Sullivan, and I live right down here on Jackson Avenue. Um, we talked about senior housing, which I think is great. I'm a senior also. Uh, are we talking about a rental or are we talking about a condominium type? So this is something that is still in um, discussion at this point. Um, but I'd love to hear what your uh, what everyone's preference is on that. Well, I, I just want to so that so we've got we've got some uh, developers that are interested only in rentals. We've got a, a, a developer that would consider a mixed development. So we, we're, we're trying to, that's part of the analysis of trying to figure out, A, what's best in terms of uh, finances moving forward, as well as figuring out what the community wants. But I'd also like to follow through with that gentleman over there. I also wouldn't mind having private homes in the back here, very much like a bell mm -hmm. And I agree that, yes, they did take a long time to sell, but the value of them today kind of makes it worthwhile. And I think we could put more than 11 or 12 of those type homes on this property. You said 18 to 20. 18 to 20. 11 acres. 11 acres, right, so. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> I'll walk around, one second. Okay. okay, I don't have to walk around, it's okay. I'm Robert Azoldi. I live on 565 Peter Paul Drive. My question would be, if we wanted to look at it to be a cash generator for the town, rather than it being sold as a one-time uh, sale, if we wanted to do that and we wanted to open up an unsolicited proposal process, how would somebody go ahead and get to the board another proposal, whether it be a sport complex, something along those lines? What's the avenue to get in touch with you guys to do the, that? The uh, avenue would be to contact Mrs. Winkler. Okay. And um, she will discuss it with any potential developer and pass along any any proposal to the board. Okay. But 
in the proposal, it would be the idea of a cash generator rather than a one-time sale. Any, anything uh, legal. Okay. We'll, we'll, this will work. <laughs> All right. We're not selling the business. We're just selling the property. Right. Understood. So when you say yeah. cash generator, we're not, we're not operating yeah. the business there. If it had the ability to generate um, revenue for the town or for the residents of West Iso, would that be something to be considered? No, you're, you're no. talking about uh, opening you know, a, a private... Company. Like the sports complex, for instance. So say that was a sports complex and we had uh, a, something like uh, Tanner Park, for instance. There's a music venue there, there's uh, a water park for children, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. The town runs that, right, Town of Babylon. Right, so, so the, the town would have to run that as a business. Okay. And so they would need to purchase that property from us. In other words, the West Side of the school district cannot operate right. a park or Understood. a flesh park or a sports complex and manage that. Okay. So, so, so yeah, in, in theory we consider anything, but as Ms. Lorza said, we, we, we're, we're a school district. We're, Understood. You know, okay. So we start with well, well, at least we're still responsible. And is that still, that's a good point, is that still up for review? That if something like um, Westbrook, now that it's, I know Divine Rhythms is one of the biggest things, and it's huge in town, my daughters go there. Is that still, still on the table? If there was an idea that came across that we could lease the property or lease the ground, as you, uh, at least the building or lease the grounds, as you mentioned earlier? All considerations still open as well. I'm hearing. As I said, yes. I okay. mean, pass, pass along, uh, get in touch with Mrs. Winkler, um, and, you know, we're not, we're not at a point yet of determining anything. Okay. As long as it's not something that requires the district to run a business or, or illegal. Said, or is illegal. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. So that's not something that will be in our direct control. Um, I know you know it's, it's something that Mrs. Winkler has has explored a little bit because she has you know a feel for. Developer will have to decide if they want to ask for the renters, but the mandate in the residential city is ten percent has to be affordable housing. What that means is that it has to be no more than eighty percent of the median income procedures. But it's not a double complex, it's not affordable, it's just senior, it's called over 55, it's called active over 55, that's what it's called. So 10% is mandated by the code to be affordable. So generally, right now, where would that be? Last year it was less, because there were more apartments available, now there's so little. I would say, if you look at Westbrook Village, which is in the east side of the Great River, that has a senior component, and the two bedrooms are going for about 2400 It's up to the developer, though, how much it costs them to build the project and what they choose to ask. That's not mandated by the town, only 10% is. And, and ultimately, we would, we would not have a say in that. Right, right. The other thing is, um, as far as um, the environment, the environmental survey, mm -hmm. and the town, Required to do it by the side of the survey. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You mentioned change of zoning to residential. Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing as senior residential to lock that in? Yes, residential C. Yes, residential C. Second is rentals. Mm -hmm. We are totally against that with the association. We don't want rentals in West Tyson anymore. They're not good people to live with. They're in, they're out, they don't care. They don't put up their lights at Christmas. <laughs> so give it to us. Lock that out. I have, I have a question regarding the zoning. Could you uh, state your name for the record? Oh, Jim Um, how come I'm <laughs> um, You said we're changing the zoning from school to senior. What would, what if somebody bought the property and you guys said, okay, it's great, we vote, we say we love the deal, we love the idea, the community votes yes, and then they change the zoning. So there's really no guarantee that what we say we want will yes. remain. So there is, there is, it has to go through a change of zone for the town. And so once that zone is assigned by the town, that's the zone. They'd have to change it again, and the community then would have to get involved in that. Just like, you know, we always and, and these gentlemen over here can, can tell you how much they pressure they can put on the town over this. Well, they can, if they want, then they can go to the town. They can try, yeah. Just like they try and build a 7-Eleven on the corner of Hunter and Hunter and Hunter. Right. Uh, right. You know, and everybody comes out marching on Angie that night and says, no, thank you. So, you know, that's what we want. And my next question is, if, what if we go out and we vote and the community says no, it's a sale, then what? The property still sit there. Yeah. Correct. Is there any way that we could look like look at options to maybe redo that building, make it a better a better elementary school, and maybe close one of the other schools that isn't in such great shape in our community? Because there are some schools in the community that are not in the best shape. We know that from visiting other communities. Maybe putting money into Masera and making it this extraordinary so elementary. Masera is actually in the. I know it is. That's what I'm saying. Investment into it. So that would be um, a very expensive proposition. It would be it would be more effective, more efficient to fix the existing buildings, which of course is what we've been doing with the bond building. So then, what I'm saying though is, like, if, if we took another building, like, say, maybe South Montauk, maybe that one of those buildings, senior housing, and invested some money. You know what I'm saying? There are other other options. Oh boy! Really? You know what I mean? No. I do. I know. Are you Come on. Insane? You know. Yeah. Okay. But. <laughs> okay. So so nobody gets upset, Mrs. Larosa. This is the your old friends. <laughs> no, but what I mean is like so maybe there's more of a need for senior housing on the south side. It's just the south about other buildings that we're leasing. Maybe that's another option just to look at. I, it's just something to look at. Can I say something, please? I was called in 10 years ago to meet with an architect to go through the Sarah School when Moses was considering renewing their lease for another 10 years. I know the building isn't very, very 10 big. years ago, the estimate to renovate it was $5 million. Almost six. And now it was closer probably to seven or eight. And it was just in the paper that the town of Babylon has to spend $8 million just to replace their heating and air conditioning systems, not including any other improvements in the building. It's it's not cost effective. Yeah. And also honestly I, I get that it's not cost effective, but I just feel that on the north side of town there's one elementary school and there's a big population on the side of town. Well but it's the, it's you don't not consider open on the north side of well open on the south side of sunrise, right? One block. It's we have two north schools, we have two southern schools. Uh, Jamie, I just want to ask you a question because going back to Kim's question, if the if, if our proposal fails and the building goes unoccupied, um, are there districts surrounding us that have this problem of these, you these, these blighted buildings that are just sitting there? Yeah. I was the broker to sell the Bauer Elementary School in Lindenhurst and the community voted it down. And it was just in the again in the paper how much the district is struggling because it costs them in excess every year of three hundred thousand dollars just to maintain an empty building. They had a couple of tenants in there that had like a, 
a theater group, they had a nursery school, but they, they are still in debt over 300000 so they probably put it back up to vote again to sell it. That's probably something we should let the community you know. Yeah. We know there's a lot of it tonight. I That's come, your job. Right, but I come most months and there's not many so, people. So, so this, I mean, this is why we're starting this process. You know, this talking. is why we're here now, so, yeah. that, we, so that we hopefully yeah, get the viewpoint of the community at large and don't find ourselves in that position so that we have a, a real good idea that we are going to come up with something the community does approve. So, you know, it's part of the process. Because we have watched what went on in, in Lindenhurst and it is certainly something I, I would want to see happen here. Um, yes? I know there's better people. Just would you put your statement in? My name is Eric. Uh, Alicia, I live on the other side of the place. Just a quick tidbit of information. If you look at our codes, you can look online and Google E code 360. You can click on New York, click on Town of Islet. You can click on the zoning and check on the residential city. It'll tell you exactly what's on the deck. So I was concerned, I know there's been a few questions about that. As far as variances, when you go to change a use, it's a big, long process that they have to notify the town. And you can go there and express an opinion. So if they sell the property, and they change the use to residential city, and then that person later on wants to change it to commercial or some sort of other use. It has to again go to the board for a change of use, which goes to notify. So everyone would again have a say in the town of Iceland. Uh, okay? Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So I, I, I've seen Mr. Lombardi, and he's raising his hand, but I, I will also add before Mr. Lombardi asks the question, um, Masera, of course, uh, contains. Soccer fields. Uh, Mrs. Burns referenced it in the um, in the opening presentation. And one of the things that we will be doing with as part of this project is building uh, an additional field. Uh, the idea at the moment is down between uh, Curtihy and Bayview, so that the community will not lose uh, a playing field. That the kids will uh, will not lose opportunity. To, uh, to play. Did I answer your question, Mr. Lombardi, or did you have something else? Actually, I have something else. <laughs> okay, then. Mike Lombardi, for the record. I do have a question. Um, I, I personally do not want to see another medical building. I think we have enough. I think we have enough car dealers in West Pikesville. Um, personally, I would love to see the idea of condos for housing. I was around for uh, South Gate or Great, as the people who went there had said in the past. But, and that was a small number of houses that went there. I think it was 12 or 15. So I love the idea of condos. But why did you home in on senior condos as opposed to just regular condos? Uh, again, because we were knowing, uh, I'm sorry, knowing that the population of West Side so the student population is going down, I would think regular condos were also bring so again, you know, the idea was that there was this need for it, uh, both in terms of a market demand as well as a community demand. That, that was it. But if you did regular condos, it would be both, right? Or, or no? Because the senior condos give the ability for possibly. But the, you know, as far as the student population, uh, again, we're we're looking to stabilize the population, but not necessarily add burden beyond stabilization. So, and, and just a suggestion, can somebody from the town of Iceland come to the next meeting to assure us that they wouldn't go about changing it? We can work on that. Good idea. We'll see what we can do. Mrs. Hanschel? Yes, hi. Um, if you could state your name for the practice, too. Jordan Hanschel.
I'm, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about all of it. You know, I, mean, I think the idea is from just listening is a good idea. Um, you know, I think that we as a society have to take care of the elderly. Sometimes they get not treated well. So I think in that respect, I think it's a very nice idea. My concern is the traffic flow. Because right now, um, you all, in, in the morning and the afternoon, it's, it's very crowded. You should get out of the side street. So I was just curious if you had the idea how you're going to manage the flow of traffic. I mean, I'm sure a developer would know how to do that, but that's my biggest concern. Just say, because the kids are flying their bikes, they still do the wheelies, which drives me crazy. I feel like they want to pull over and tell their child, stop doing the wheelies in the middle of the road. You know, and, and you know, it just, it just it concerns me because a lot of kids walking and driving where I'm trying to send them. It's a little scary. So I, I mentioned earlier, you know, the, the infrastructure of West Islip, which is, you know, obviously, like, like I said, most of Long Island is, is really overwhelmed, right? Long Island was, was designed um, for one car families, and, and now we have two, three, four car families. There are so many more people, so many more vehicles on the road. And um, we actually think that this is probably the least uh, of all the ideas considered, this would be the least intrusive in terms of additional traffic. Um, you know, Mr. Antonello had brought up uh, a, a building a, a downtown uptown, if you will, um, and that was certainly one of the concerns that we had was bombarding that area with additional traffic. So that you know, really, we kind of think that, uh, and, and there are buses there. So. So that will be something that will um, be done as part of the town approval. There will be a traffic study, and that and that'll be part of it. Thank you. I know there's a hands up. Oh, Mr. Blonsky, state your name for the record. Edge Blonsky. Um, with the two options that are currently on the table as far as condos versus apartments, have there been any estimates or analysis about which one would be the greater tax generator over time? So over the first 10 years, well, so there, of course you can, you can get, wait, this wrong, 12 apartments per acre, 10 condos per acre, but the rentals are eligible for the tax abatement. I get that. Uh, okay, the condos are eligible for the tax abatement, but but the rentals are not. So over those first ten years, um, the, t the the taxes thrown off by it would be less. Right, as I said, it, it goes. It's a it's a ten year phase in. Right. So the first year we'd get 10%, second year 20, 30, up until the full amount. Uh, but of course, over that 10 year period, we have the proceeds from the sale itself. But, uh, so I'm sorry. But after that, that, after that, I'm, sorry. The apartments get the tax abatement. Right. So we get the rentals, the apartments also get the tax abatement. No. No. So we would end up, if we just did the apartments rentals, we'd end up making more money in the short run and then the long run because they would not get the tax payments and there'd be more units on top of No, uh, the, the, the rentals, we would get less taxes over the first 10 years than, than the condos. Okay. I'm sorry? We would get a pilot fee. Yeah, we'd probably get a pilot fee. Okay. Um, but it is, is it possible to get estimates, you know, to help yes. make decisions versus so, rentals versus condos? So, so and, and, the, and the taxes per unit are different, rental from condo. Absolutely. But we have, Mr. Pilati has been working with, with the assessor uh, of quite a bit to try to get a real estimate. Uh, unfortunately, they're not in position until we know what we're actually proposing. So it will most definitely be part of the discussion as we go forward with with real concrete numbers. Right. You know, right now we're we're still dealing in abstract. I know I saw other hands. May I ask a historical question, please? Oh, sure. Does that mean I don't have to answer? That's true. Uh, John Davis again, and myself and the other gentlemen here are also active in the historical society, West Island Historical Society. Uh, when the district was being formed, Mr. Blue, Paul Blue, and the other board members at the time were very kind.
conscious of having historical names, hence the names you've seen in the school of mentioned in the that's what that school was born, uh, the name was built. Um, any possibility of considering, and I'm glad Mr. Becerra is here, but I don't want to offend him, so he's right here to he give us any possibility of using that name, Pondock, on whatever kind of development is made on that parcel, just so that name can stand. The tribal names that you know in this area. But that's my question. Yeah, I, I, certainly that's something that, that could be considered, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, this, this board, like, like the others you have, you have mentioned before, has tried to be uh, conscious of, of the community's history and, and um, certainly and certain individuals that have, you know, uh, gone above and beyond, but as well as um, the actual history of the, of the town. But I guess my question would be, it was like, have we reached out to, I guess, like, to the fire department and saw what would they be interested in the property? Uh, they, as our community is growing and stuff, you know, you know maybe it's a, a good location for a, for a fire station. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't you know. Most of us, you know, maybe, you know. Yes. Like those are just some other things maybe we should consider. I think the post office was uh, actually looking to relocate. This is my handicap accessible. My board is supposed to be a handicap accessible. I mean, off the top of my head, I think it's probably a big property for the post office. Right. And, yeah. you know, and again, the, the traffic, the increase in traffic would be a concern. But, but we can, you know. Sure. Thank you. Phil Sullivan, once again. Thank you. So based on the student housing project, what is the total number? 120? It would, be, it would be somewhere between 120 and 132. 120 and 132. Yes. of the population of, of young parents 
that you have now who are potentially looking to leave. I'm sorry, can you speak up just a little bit? I'm talking about the younger, the younger parents who potentially are looking to leave West Iceland. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I currently rent, and I uh, the idea of living in a separate space, a condo, or like a renting community um, to keep my daughter in her, in this town. She's currently in second grade, and I, I don't really want her to be pulled out of this district. Um, I also think you're forgetting that most people look at this district as an ideal place, especially young families for young children. Um, I feel like the senior community is a good idea, but what you haven't talked about, like the 30-year-olds <laughs> who live here. And so, you're, say, so you would advocate for, for not the 55 and older, but well, a, a I just community mean, that would be open to all. Well, I just feel like, too, or specific, the idea of, of younger families, like the 25 to 38 year old range who got kicked in the butt by the economy in 2008. And right, so how, to how rent, but uh, don't, home ownership is not in your well, future. Home ownership is not but in your future. Like the community in terms of yeah. living here in schools, but housing in general, affordable housing. Yeah. Home ownership is not ideal for my age group as much as it seems to for many people. And um, I think that the idea to say that renters don't get invested. Like I've been renting as long as my daughter's been alive, and I'm pretty invested in this town. I'm a Girl Scout leader. I'm in every sport with my daughter. I appreciate to be, that. I appreciate that 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 comment. But I know there's quite a few parents who are in my position, and we talk about it a lot. So I just think it's something to consider, and I hope you would. Thank you. As far as even us, the bringing uh, the LGBT community, like the only thing to us that, that we are assuming that they would move out of their, their home. No, oh, no, not home. assuming. Hoping. Hoping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if they don't, then we have more LGBT people in the world to be right? mm -hmm. And how is that going to affect our the budget? Mm -hmm. What are the budget? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want me to talk about it? Sure. <laughs> So your so your assumption is that you know we're inviting seniors in from the outside or moving from a home into um, this great one twenty complex and they would come out and go no on the budget. Is that my yes. Concern? Yes. Well, here's my thing. Here's my thing. If you're voting no on a budget, you're voting no on a budget, and that's whether you are 100 years old, whether you're 20 years old. And so our job as a board is to bring out the yes votes, and that's what we're trying to do every single year. So I don't think we can make a decision based upon these over 55 who's going to vote no on our budget, so we're not going to create housing for them. I just, I don't go down that road, which is 12 years we've passed budgets here. Some have been harder than others. Uh, and I think that at the end of the day, we do a good job with our school district, with the community. We'll bring the people out to say, yes, you're doing a good job. So yes on the budget. Yeah. Yes, you know. I, I, mean, I, I appreciate that I do. And I know that, you know, people sometimes get an influx from the uh, consolation. And we know those votes are all walking in no for whatever reason. But, you know, you know the, re the reality is um, there are many seniors that support education every year they always have um, their kids went to school here maybe they went to school here the kids went to school here maybe their grandkids go to school here now uh, they just support education so you know I think that um, as, as Ms. LaRosa says as long as we as a, as a board and administration um, continue to do our job and present responsible and fiscally sound budgets uh, we'll be okay. A, a no vote on a budget really is um,
Anyone else? Yes, sir. Vincent Aguilar. Um, question, like when this was um, listed, you know, the, the property was listed, was it just open to 55 and older, or were all the bids, you know, different types of uh, uh, projects, and then you pick the 55 and over? The, the solicitation as it went out was for uh, 55 and older. Okay. We had contemplated the options prior to that. Right. So, so you already made that decision without well, seeing it. Was, it was, so my, my comment is like, you know, can, can we see other projects? You know, a couple of people uh, presented, you know, uh, sports complex or whatever the, the case might be. And then maybe at the next meeting or whatever, say, okay, yeah, we received three or four different types of proposals. And let's make an informed decision based on a variety of projects, not strictly, you know, pigeonholed into the 55 and older. Because, you know, one thing that I'm concerned about is the density. We're talking about 120 units as opposed to a Bell's Nursery type where it's 20. I mean, that, 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 that's, you know, five times more traffic, you know, in that intersection there. Um, and then, you know, you might have tax payments over there where on the, on the single family homes, you're not, you know, so you'll have that tax base for the full tax base for, for 10 years. So, you know, don't be short sighted and say, oh, we're going to get more money up front. But in the long run, it might be better off the other way, but not knowing, uh, not getting other types of offers, we can't make that decision. So, uh, you know, as, as we said, um, the objective up front was to come up with the approach that would be in the best interest of the community in the big picture. Um, and, you know, that was the direction that we went in. Uh, it, it, in terms of the decision, you know, like I said before, it was a decision, but it wasn't necessarily a final decision. Um, we can talk about it. Uh, I'm not sure that we'll go back at this point, but we, we can talk about it further. Thank you.
May I have a motion for the acceptance of the resignation of Carrie Cul Culkin, part-time food service worker, effective December 14, 2019. Mm -hmm. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have a motion for the acceptance of the resignation of Rosemary Geodice, school nurse, effective January 4, 2020. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the acceptance of the retirement of Sylvie DeSano, part-time food service worker, effective December 21st, 2019, after 16 years. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the acceptance of the retirement for Mike LeJudis, Chief Custodian of the High School, effective January 31st, 2020, after 25 years. So moved. Second. Discussion? Um, before we vote, I would just like to take the opportunity to thank Mr. LeJudis and Ms. DeSano for their service. Um, Mike's been here for 25 years. I think you're back. Are you back there, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> but we know how challenging that role is in any building, but most especially the high school. So we would like to thank you for all that you've done. Change in title for Fortunata D. Martino, library aide, effective December 13th, 2019. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have a motion for the probationary appointment of Carol Trapita, senior office assistant, effective January 13th, 2020. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have a motion for the probationary appointment of Myra Castillo, cafeteria aid, effective December 13th, 2019. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have a motion for the acceptance of the probationary appointment of Carrie Culkin, special ed aid, special education aid, effective December 16th, 2019. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the probationary appointment of Robin Lamort, special education aide, effective December 13th, 2019. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, may I have a motion for uh, the appointment of a special ed substitute special education aide, Myra Castillo, effective December 13th, 2019. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the 2020 spring high school coaches as listed in the agenda. So moved. <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the spring 2020 middle school coaches as listed in the agenda. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the homebound instructors as listed in your agenda? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the substitute teachers as listed in your agenda? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Curriculum update. So Mars. Good evening. On Thursday, December 5th, Mr. Ryan Ballman, who's the transition coordinator at West Bison High School, he hosted a career fair for our students. We actually had two board members present, Mr. McCann and Mr. Geller, sat with our students, as did various professionals from um, different areas, such as the medical field. We had a representative there from Disney, financial, financial institutions, engineers, um, and really spoke with the students about their experiences, how to get into the career. It was set up almost like a speed dating where the professionals were seated and the kids went from table to table. Um, so it was an event that the students really enjoyed. So a special thank you to Mr. Bauman and all of the um, professionals that took part. We did have a lot of local uh, businesses and professionals from the West Dyson community there as well. 
Last Friday, December 6th, was the superintendent's conference day for our secondary staff. We tried something new um, and created an ed camp. What an ed camp is, is uh, we come up with various topics, or actually I should say the staff comes up with various topics related to education that they would like to learn more about. They split up and go into different rooms, um, and they take charge of their own learning. We had three sessions throughout the day. Each session had about 20 offerings where the teachers and staff members could go. We have received great feedback, and we're looking forward to have additional ed camp uh, staff developments in the future. Mr. Grover, our director of math, is in the process of working with our elementary principals to put together a parent academy for our elementary math parents to share with them information about math standards and resources that they can utilize. The experience is going to involve our students, modeling, hands-on activities, so elementary parents should be looking forward to getting information about that in the coming weeks. I wish everybody a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parson. Yeah, I, I will jump in on that. Um, I attended the uh, career fair last year and uh, had the opportunity to, to do so again. Uh, Mr. Holman is doing a, a terrific job. Uh, he keeps trying to improve it and, and uh, make it better every year. It, uh, for me, it's very enjoyable. Everybody knows, knows me, knows this sure so will be rolling her eyes any second. But no, everybody that knows me knows that I love to talk about engineering and uh, you know try to encourage kids to get into uh, science and engineering fields, so it was, uh, it was a very enjoyable morning. Yeah, I would agree. I participated in that. I, you know, I graduated high school about over 30 years ago, and I don't remember having anything like it. So the chance to sit and talk to you, it was really freshmen all the way through seniors to find out where they're going, what they want to do. It was a really interesting process and a great asset to to where they want what, what they want to do, other than just the guidance council. So Mr. Baldwin's did a great job uh, as that coordinator, and uh, look forward to the next events on that. Okay, uh, Mr. McGinnis will discuss the meeting of the Finance Committee, and then he's going to discuss the meeting of the Builders and Grants Committee. He's going to be talking for a while, and Mr. McGinnis really likes to do that. Mm -hmm. I can do the report. Okay. Uh, the Finance Committee, will do that one first, met on December 10th. Committee members present, myself and uh, Mr. Michalak. Other board members in attendance, Steve Geller, Rich Antonello, Tom Capitello, and Peter McCann. Administrators present, Superintendent Burns and Elisa Pilati. Others present, Deborah Falcone, the Treasurer, and Pat Pompton, and Colonel Plains Auditor. The purpose of the meeting, as always, is to, uh, to review the warrants for the month and discuss pertinent fiscal matters. The meeting uh, was called to order at 7.30. As we normally do, we reviewed the reports for the month. The Treasurer's report, uh, the school district funds, and the extracurricular funds for October were presented and accepted by the committee. The payroll summary report for November was presented and accepted by the committee. The financial statements for October were presented and accepted by the committee. The internal claims audit report for November was presented and accepted by the committee. The system manager audit trail for November uh, 10.30 through 11.30 was presented and accepted by the committee. The payroll certifications for payroll periods November 5th and November 29th presented and accepted by the committee and we reviewed the warrants uh, for the month. Uh, we also reviewed the following board agenda items. Approval of uh, the budget transfers were presented and accepted by the committee for submission to the board tonight. The approval of surplus equipment, IBM uh, correcting electric typewriter. Uh, 120 music textbooks uh, and the end of life for some IT and AV equipment. Uh, we also uh, were presented with uh, the following donations and resolutions. Alliance Insurance Services donated $700 to the cafeteria fund to pay down negative balances that students have occurred, incurred. Uh, Special Olympics uh, donate $1,000 for a unified sports athletic program. Uh, the district's, district's corrective action plan uh, related to the independent orders report for the year ended June 30, 2019 uh, from R.S. Abrams was presented to the committee. The following contracts were reviewed and approved for 2019-20. Dr. Petrovsky, F. Hollow Hills School District, hardship and eligibility amendments to the West Islip Union Free School District 403B retirement plan. Lindenhurst Union Free School District, Milestones and Home Care, Mountain Lake Academy, South Huntington School District, Tender Age Pediatric Therapies, and Theralympics Speech. 
Uh, there's an, an additional discussion item. Uh, the committee discussed if the district were to decide to use any of the capital reserve funds uh, for the 2020-2021 school year, a proposition would have to be added to the budget in uh, the ballot in May. Uh, the committee is going to evaluate the remaining bond project before making any decision related to potentially using that capital reserve. And the meeting was adjourned at 747. And I will go right into the buildings and grounds meeting, which was held uh, immediately following the finance committee and district office. Uh, the meeting started at 7.50. Uh, members in attendance were myself, Paul Mitchellock, uh, Superintendent Burns, uh, Lisa Plotty, and James Bossi. Others in attendance, Steve Gallo, Rich Nintanello, Tom Campitello, and Peter Payne. Uh, we discussed a bond update. The, the committee discussed the current projects as well as uh, the phase four bid process uh, for which there were multiple bidders and uh, the results are looking good and we'll get a further briefing on that. The phase five projects were submitted to the state education, will be submitted to the state education department by January 15th. BPS uh, is reviewing the plans uh, for, to possibly upgrade the field between Bayview and Kirby schools in the event the uh, Becerra fields are sold to a developer. There was a request for, uh, by the West Isaac Soccer Club uh, for additional use of the, or for, to put in temporary turf lights at the Barbary turf field for additional use of the fields. Uh, and to, in keeping with the considerations of the neighbors for the area, uh, we will not be moving forward with that. The Bridges Academy has requested um, permission to replace the basketball court with blacktop and a better surface, and we will evaluate that in, you know, in relation to all the other projects. Um, the PVC solar panel roof project on uh, Mr. Pilati and uh, Mr. Bossi met with ECG to review and analyze submittals and get directions and recommendations uh, to put solar panels on our roofs. Uh, we got an update on the Willits Creek Lake Capri remediation. Uh, the Willits Creek remediation is on schedule and it is anticipated, hopefully, uh, but anticipated that the senior parking lot will be available for graduation. Uh, the committee adjourned to executive session at 8.35, uh, reconvened at 9.13, and uh, adjourned at 9.14. Thank you, Mr. McGinnis. You can take the rest of the night off. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Campitello will discuss the meeting of the Special Education Committee, and then he will continue on to talk about the meeting of the Safety Committee. Roger that. Okay, the Special Education Committee met at 0800 hours on the 12th of December in the District Office Conference Room. Members present were Ms. Dowling, Ms. Doherty, Ms. Ms. Morrison, Mr. McGinnis, and myself. The committee reviewed the current Special Education Services to students throughout the district by building and disability. We discussed the placement of special education students in outside facility, facilities beyond, for things beyond the capabilities of the district and BOCES. A quick meeting and adjourned at 08, 50 hours. Now, Safety and Security Committee met on 10 December at 1830 in the Beach Street Middle School Library. Members present were Mrs. Burns, Mr. Giller, myself, Mr. Mitchellack, Mr. McCann, Ms. Morrison, Ms. Pilati, Dr. Bridgman, Ms. Fulton, Mr. Mascalpo, Mr. Marquardt, Mr. O'Farrell, Ms. Pratt, Ms. Williams, Ms. Leteri, Mr. Dixon, Mr. Wallace, Mr. Bossi, and Mr. McCray. There was absent with Mr. Horan. All right, technology up updates discussed. Mr. McCray and Ms. Fulton demonstrated the RAVE app and explained the app, applied geofence system, how, how the application is used in the event of notification of emergency personnel. Ms. McClary gave a comprehensive review of the equipment updates and initiatives throughout the district, including installation of the blue light warning system, indicating uh, police are in the building. Building phone systems are upgraded. The blue light system will provide internal and external visual notification of emergency situations. Camera coverage has been expanded in the district. You have 70, 67 exterior and 149 interior cameras. will be added shortly. Additional service is being added to accommodate this new technology increase. Four additional bank detectors will be added to the place, in the place of the high school bathrooms. Supervision for evening activities needs to be increased uh, in high school for Jay Blue. Budget considerations for 2021, we discussed having uh, additional two, two security guards in the evening at Blue and high school. Other staffing needs will have to be discussed later. Uh, cost projections are included in the additional security requirement budget. 
informal items. Protocols and visitor, visitor management system are being developed and will include protocols to deal with the visitor who has been flagged by the system being having problems. The code of conduct will be revised to include penalties for falsely use of uh, reporting of emergency initiation of the blue light system. And we adjourn the meeting at 1855 hours. Thank you, Mr. Contello. And Mr. McCann will discuss the meeting of the Health and Wellness Committee. Thank you. The Health and Wellness Alliance met on Tuesday, November 19th, 9.30 a.m. Members present were Tim Moran, Robert Pratt, Julie Canestra, Sharon Kerrigan, Paul Walter, Michelle Lessey, Aaron Bodies, Lynn Summers, Rich McKay, Barbara Henke, Michelle Wilson, Francesca Emma, Mar Marcel Fredelli, and Camille Newsom. Uh, they discussed the financial report that day from the finances. Uh, we discussed the color run, which um, review it was a wonderful community event held back at approximately 400 participants. Uh, we also had a record number of volunteers this year, which was a very good showing. It only took me three days to get the dye out of my hair. Um, we also discussed coming up with a newsletter uh, to cover mental health, making appropriate behavior in a school uh, events, social host laws, hotlines, expected release date of late January or February. And other business discussed the public comment period is open for the Gardasil vaccination. Uh, the Family Connect Night seems to be going well. We're looking to coordinate a community event around some of the Family Connect Night nights, examples, community movie night, ice cream night, and march into fitness night. Next meeting is Tuesday, January 7th at 9.30 in the Paul J. Ballou Cafeteria. Meeting adjourned at 10.30 a.m. Thank you, Mr. McCann. Ms. Pilati will discuss financial matters and business items. Thank you. Good evening. Our treasurer's report for the month of October had a beginning balance of $53,611,333.54 and an ending balance of $38,726,864.05. May I have a motion for the approval of budget transfers 3753 through 3758 for the general fund and 3755 through 3761 for the capital fund? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the donation from Alliant Insurance Services for $700 that will be going to the West Isla Cafeteria Fund? So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, so that money is actually being um, donated to resolve the outstanding uh, debts that some students have. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the donation from Special Olympics for the West Islip Unified Basketball Program for $1,000. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval to, for the increase to the budget for 2019-20 for the $1,000 related to the Special Olympics donation? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the contracts as listed on the agenda? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the surplus equipment and textbooks as listed on the agenda? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion for the approval of the resolution for the approval of the corrective action plan as related to the independent auditor's report for the year ended June 30th, 2019 from our external auditors, R.S. Abrams and Company. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Blatt. Uh, can I have a motion for the approval of the uh, amendment to, uh, Winkler, to the Winkler contract? So moved. Second. Discussion? So this is actually uh, uh, an extension, a one-year extension of the same terms of our agreement with Mrs. Winkler with the real estate for to continue representing us in leasing the other, the two buildings. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Can I have a motion for the approval of the re resolution of the destruction of unused and full ballot booklets from the May 21st, 2019 election? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
and I have a motion for the approval of Teamsters Local 237 Memorandum of Agreement regarding additional duties. So moved. Second. Discussion? So just if anybody's curious, uh, local, Teamsters Local 237 is what has always been uh, WISE, which is the uh, uh, most clerical unit in West Iceland. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Can I have a motion for the approval of the revised Chief School Physicians 2019-2020? So Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, lastly, I just want to mention that um, I had the opportunity, you know, it's, uh, it's of course concert season. I don't know if you uh, got here in time to catch uh, some of the kids, some of the students playing out front uh, earlier. Um, they, of course, did a great job, but it's also a concert season all around the district. I uh, had the opportunity to attend um, the orchestra, not orchestra, the chorus concert uh, last week and the band concert this week. Um, the orchestra concert was, chorus concert, was really interesting. They sang in probably six or eight different languages that evening, from Latin to Hebrew to um, Croatian. It was, it was really a terrific night, as was the, uh, the band. Um, we have an orchestra concert. I hope I'm not stepping on your... Uh, we have an orchestra concert coming up this Wednesday at the high school, so if you have an opportunity, um, have some time, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Okay, Mrs. Burns. Oh, Thanks. Thank you. Um, I would like to congratulate our football team on its outstanding season, although we did not prevail at the county finals. Our students really represented themselves and all of us very well, and I'm really very proud of them and their coaches led by Mr. Belletti. Um, as Mr. Geller pointed out, we are in the midst of concert season, and while um, we have had the opportunity to attend the high school concerts last week and last night and next week orchestra, I can assure you that our elementary and middle schools are also in full swing, doing an amazing job, and it's really fascinating to watch the pro progression, the skill progression of the kids from the time they enter the program in fourth grade until they um, you know, do what they do on stage as high school students. If you have an opportunity, please do avail yourself of those opportunities to attend. The schedule is posted on the district website. Um, congratulations also to our thespians, both at the high school and at Beach Street Middle School. Our high school students had the opportunity to perform their one-act plays and Beach Street students performed Frozen Junior. It really, both of them were really terrific productions. Um, the musical for a uh, middle school level and having been the former drama director at Udall, what an outstanding performance. And we really got to uh, experience the new sound and lighting systems here in the middle school at Beach Street. So uh, very proud of our students and our advisors there. Um, and finally, our initial registration for our incoming kindergarten students took place over the last few weeks. Um, that is ongoing. If you know of anyone, one of your neighbors or a friend or a relative who has a kindergartner and they have not registered, kindly remind them that that initial phase of registration is done and as we are de starting to develop our budget, it is critical that we know who our students are that will be attending school with us in September. Um, and I think Mrs. Morrison will be sharing more about pre-K registration shortly. And finally, I too would like to wish everyone a very joyous and festive holiday season. Thank you, Mrs. Burns. Okay. No other items or board member uh, information. Any members of the public wishing to speak? Okay. In that case, uh, we go. Ms. Lombardi, please state your name for the record. <laughs> So Michael Marty, um, West Iceland Soccer uh, President, and um, I heard you say uh, we asked about extra lighting for the lights. I heard you made a motion. I talked about it earlier that it wasn't approved. So um, the district always we have always put portable lights down on the turf. We've been using that for the last I don't know eight years or so. Sharing it with football, football literally football decided not to use it. Uh, we've been using it ever since. We've been pretty much filling it from Monday through Thursday all the time. And the district put lights in. And then since the district put lights in, of course, uh, the district um, 
right? Well, school sports want to play night games. So between the night games and people practicing, it's taken away considerable time. So we asked the um, board if we could put a light somewhere else. So we'd like the board to reconsider that. Um, football used it. Soccer used it. In fact, soccer went to girls' soccer went to the playoffs. Um, the Suffolk County champs. The boys went to the playoffs as well. Um, the cheerleaders who always went and practiced before the big prep rally um, always used to ask us, can we just practice there before the prep rally? That night I always used to say, yep, go down, we'll practice around you. This year I was told we can't practice because the cheerleaders are going down and using the field. So I'd like you to reconsider that. We're asking not for four lights, we're asking for possibly two lights. It could be any building, it doesn't matter. But, um, so you feel like you're being pushed out because we actually installed lights? Yeah, that's right. And you're losing that time because now everybody wants right, those lights. Right, and, and we're paying for the lights when we go to use them. So we're just asking if it's possible that we can reconsider that opening up. And we're not going to use them until the fall. It's only the fall that we use them. We don't use them in the spring because in the spring, there's daylight. It's not an issue. So it's just the fall. It's just those uh, eight weeks in the fall. Mr. Lombardi, how often were you um, displaced from the field? I would have to go back and look, but I'll, I will tell you when the school game starts at 4 o'clock and they schedule them until 6, normally we were on the fields already, but we can't get on the fields, so we're we always going an hour later every time. So did that game. happen from September through November? Yes. Could you give us some more specifics as to Yeah, I can, get, I can get that. that. So, so just so you're aware, the, the consideration uh, or the concern on the board's part was for the neighbors and part of the discussion with the neighbors when we put in the permanent lights was, okay, you're not going to have those lousy temps anymore and it's going to be so much better. So now we'd be back in a position of, yes, this side is so much better, but that side I, I, is, I get it. is lousy. And I, want, and I want to work with people, you know, and I don't know how, what we so, can do. Maybe we could say, hey, Friday night soccer, you know what, we're going to have school games that night. We're going to just make sure yeah. the, the night games are more on Friday nights, which would work great for us. But they were they were you know they had games on Wednesday nights they had games on Thursday nights whatever uh, so you know, with the hockey plays they go they go along because they go with doubles so I'm just asking well, to reconsider it to get well. them back their time well right there may be there may be more dis displacement than than we were than we we're aware of so I think if you can share that uh, information with Mrs. Burns I will. Uh, we will take a, a, a well, look. Well, and, and like you said maybe another field maybe maybe two lights on the back of the baby fields where there's no you know back in the proper poses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever. I, I understand nobody's going to be happy, so I'm just <laughs> trying to make someone <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing your uh, unhappiness. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there for that vote, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Mr. Uh, Gallo, was the deciding vote? <laughs> Personnel negotiations and litigation. At the conclusion of executive session, the board will reconvene the public session in the district office boardroom to consider any items for which a vote is required. So, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I wish everybody the happiest and healthiest of uh, holidays. Enjoy the off that you have, and uh, we will see you. Remember, go baby, eat army. Go baby, eat army.